Welcome to this video. Today we are on Wednesday morning and we're awaiting the Fed news later. Don't forget, I'll be teaching live on Zoom every day, as will my uh, co-founder Alex Soller this week. Did a smasher session yesterday and the day before. We trade for income. If you want to learn how, like I said, under the video. Watch this the whole way because it's going to help you an awful lot as well. These are things you really need to know if you're going to get things right. So by the title of this video, you would have inferred already that we're going to be discussing Fib levels. Fib levels and their correct use. Fib levels are something lots of traders use in many ways. But for me, there's a very specific way I like to do it. There's good reasons behind it. Of course, it pulls my profitability, my consistency, and my accuracy up overall when I'm trading uh, with my method. So Fib levels, for anyone who does or doesn't know, are basically a scale of um, a value, essentially. If I pull the Fib level down, you can see there is different scales. And to me personally as a trader, and the way I adopt this, um, is simply to use it to understand how valuable is my trade going to be on the, well, in this case, a continuation of the downtrend. So if you look at this near-term downtrend, that's formed looks a little bit like that, more or less. Normally have a parallel line running underneath it, and it would look something, again, more or less like that. And it's not entirely accurate, but mostly robots draw my channels anyway, but more or less, that's what you're looking at. Um, and of course, within every single move and continuation, there is a FIB level, and there is a retracement as such, okay? So these retracements are what form the ebb and flow of the market long term. They're what pull the market up and pull it down, pull it up, pull it down, and everything like that, right? Now, there's different ways that traders view this. Some traders will only take trades if you hit the 61A, okay? For example, here, where, where you've just touched above it. Now, there's a problem with that because there'll be many times where you don't hit the 61A or you don't hit even the 23.6, right? So how is it, and how do you know where, where, what levels you're gonna hit, essentially, at any given time? Well, the truth is, no one knows. Nobody knows that. You don't know whether you're gonna hit the 78.6, the 23.6, the 50, the 61.8. That is the problem lots of traders have, because they think the only time you should ever short is if you hit this fib of 61.8. Okay, it's a popular FIB level, but it doesn't mean just because you've hit the 61.8 that you'll fall, or the 0.618, or whatever way, it's 61.8% of the whole 100% retracement. Um, you know, so using that as a single factor is just not a good idea, because there'll be many times where the retracement isn't that far, like this. You only get 50 and in many other cases where you only come a very short way, like on this fall here. Now, the thing with FIB levels is often the retracement's smaller when the market sentiment is more harsh. So, for example, when you fell on your euro from here over in uh, July 2023, and you came all the way down there, like I said, every single mini push up, on the way down, every single FIB level or FIB retracement on the previous move is very, very small. It's very quick. You just go straight back down again, right? So this one is perfect. If you pull from there to there, can you see that's the 23.6? Now, why are those FIB levels so much shorter than the ones you can see now? Why is this move and all the FIB levels within it so much smaller all the retracements but compared to that. Well, the difference between this and that, as you can judge by the widening of the eclipse, is there's more ebb and flow. In other words, the sentiment is not as panicky, it's not as strong, it's not weakening the euro so, so quickly compared to what it is now. Now the picture's more vague, so the market slowly falls over time and the retracements are therefore larger. So a good thing to note if you're going to use FIB levels is that your retracements within the FIB levels are often going to be larger when the sentiment isn't as harsh in one direction, okay? It's a key thing to note because if you're expecting a large retracement on extremely harsh news, um, it's unlikely you'll get that. Um, if you're long as well on a harsh fall, uh, again, sentiment strongly against you and you're expecting a 78.6 retracement immediately, it's not going to happen, okay? In many cases, 
will take a long time. What happened eventually will take a long time, like you can see up there. So for some traders, that would cause some problem with their stop loss and, and things like that. Now, the reason why you then get your 78.6 so much later is because the fall in the long term is still tentative. Right? It's not the case that it's absolutely harsh, strong, uh, weak market sentiment overall. Overall, the sentiment is actually somewhat matched for the most part. Okay? The only divergence you're getting now is, is coming with uh, the ECB wanting to diverge from the Fed. But the GDP results, for example, that just came out don't support that case. Uh, as much, and you're getting uh, Fed members saying they want to cut earlier and earlier now, um, and then other members saying they don't, saying it's not possible, and all sorts of things like that. So the sentiment, although it does slant to the euro falling, because the, the eurozone looks like they're diverging from the US in terms of their approach and their rates, um, it does support the case to get lower, but it's not absolutely crystal clear. It's not a definite, it's not a given by any means. Otherwise, you would have the ECB saying, look, let's dump the rates now. And you would have the Fed saying, let's whack the rates up. Then you would get a move like we saw over here. OK, so you've got to remember that in any case, regardless of sentiment, the Fib levels that you're going to hit are unknown. You don't know. So the only way you can go is by probabilities and by value. Now, for example, if I was looking to reshort this downtrend on the euro dollar, because I know the long term sentiment fits the weak case for the euro sentiment wise, and you've got a good text of him. I'm not going to look at this and short everything I've got just because it's a 61.8. I'm going to judge the market sentiment. I'm going to judge the price action area. I'll add in things like the Fib level. I might look at my stock oscillator, for example. All of these things will allow me to say to myself, OK, well, what's the probability of the fall? Okay, first of all. Then secondly, my brain will then think, OK, well, if I know what the probability of a fall is, I know what kind of value the FIB level is telling me, what risk am I going to insert in the market? How much am I willing to expose myself at this particular instance? Now, I would do the same here, you know, and I did. I did. I trade, I trade this pair, um, the euro dollar. But I did the same thing when the retracement was that small, you know, when you'd only come... 38.2 of the way, I then said to myself, well, again, what's the probability of success? Is it high? Is it low? What's the sentiment? What's the price action level? And I make an assumption based on the probability. It's not the case that I just won't take it because I'm at the wrong FIB, or perhaps I've hit a FIB level and that's my trigger. It's just not like that. Um, so that's really the best way to use FIB levels, because like I said, you don't know how far you're going to get on a FIB scale, whether it's going to be the 50 or the 78.6, the 88.6, the, the 100%, the 23, you just don't know. Often it's sentiment dependent, but the sentiment can change very quickly and push you up to those other FIB levels, just like you had here. You would have thought the short case existed mostly there. Then you get the long case come in and then you get a return of the short case that forms your long term downtrend within the ebb and flow of this market particularly. Okay. And you can see that quite obviously by the way you've gone. Um, so for me personally, you know, again, if I looked at this retracement, for me, that's reasonably strong. And I liked it short in line with key price action to the left. If it had gone even higher, again, I may have shorted at these key MAs and at a higher FIB and decided that the probability was better so I can scale my risk accordingly. Never going to say that the 61.8 is the be all and end all and neither should you. Now we teach you full rules on everything like this for consistent day trading. Go underneath if you want to do that. I'll see you in the next video. See you there.